welcome to episode 13 of That's the right. ADV podcast. And we're talking about how China is ramping up the blame game. Spicy topic. Uh, first off, DM won't be here today. He is traveling to take care of some stuff. So uh, it'll just be us today. So pardon yep. the, the jankiness. Yeah, Dragon came and abducted him out of his tower. But yeah, uh, yeah we'll, we'll keep you updated. Anyway, um, we're going to start out with, as always, our... What's new? Where we talk about what's new when it comes to <laughs> Is China. that what we talk about? <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, quite a lot of things are new. We're going to start out with, unfortunately, something that's not very happy. And uh, that's what's just happened in the UK. Maybe Have you we can... ever spoken about anything that's happy? We usually do. Oh, yeah. There's some usual funny stuff. Yeah. Uh, you guys probably know this is headline news. Uh, 39 people found dead in a lorry. Well, we call them trucks, right? Tractor trailers. A lorry. A lorry. That's like my aunt's name, dude. The, you know the tongue twister say red lorry, yellow lorry a, a bunch of times. Try it. Red lorry, yellow lorry. No, red, but I mean like said. Red lorry, yellow lorry, red lawyer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway. Uh, um, all right. This is not <laughs> what you usually this do. This is a red lorry. <laughs> this is a red lorry. Now, unfortunately, mm. this is mm. very tragic news. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all 39 people found in the back of the truck were, were dead. Yeah. They're pronounced dead. There's eight women and 31 men, I believe. And this is found in Essex, UK. So this is in England. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of uh, there was a lot of speculation in the beginning. They refused to say the nationality of the people in the truck in the beginning. I think they wanted to confirm. I understand why, um, but now it's making huge headline news, even in China. Very surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, I thought, of all things, this would be a piece of news that would be blocked in China. I don't think it would be blocked, especially if it could be. Uh, spun in a way that suits uh, the we'll, narrative. We'll get into that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, heart, heart goes out to the people, yeah. the families that were affected by this. Very screwed up. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of human trafficking involved in China. It's actually, in the entire world, mm -hmm. the third highest rate of human trafficking comes out of China. It makes sense. Um, and that's big. And a lot of people don't understand that this is what I wanted you to kind of touch on, is mm -hmm. that a lot of people that are not accustomed to China, maybe yeah. they only read news headlines or stuff, um, they think that China is on the same level financially or success-wise success, success -wise than most Western countries. Well, that's the image China portrays, and unfortunately it's kind of false. Because, yes, you will see a lot of rich Chinese people, especially the ones that end up traveling over, overseas. Mm -hmm. They do so because they're influential, they have money, mm. they're either very influential and very rich, or they're part of the growing middle class. Mm -hmm. And the middle class in China is very well off. Mm. You know, um, I would say it's different to the middle classes that you find in Western countries. Yeah. The middle class <laughs> in China would be considered rich, you know, in a lot of ways. Think about like the amount of money you have to spend to buy a house, to have a car in China compared to the West. Mm -hmm. You can live a middle class lifestyle in a suburb or something, mm -hmm. and it's much cheaper than the mm -hmm. middle class in the big cities of China. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at here is that, um, as you said, China isn't all about rich people. Mm. It's not all about wealth. It's actually all about poverty and poor people mm. when you get out of the big cities. It, it is the majority you know, of the population. The majority of people are still impoverished. And this actually mm. boils down to the whole definition of poverty. Yes. So when you have Western definitions of poverty, like with the UN and all this mm. kind of stuff, you have a certain scale. Yes. Living yeah. off of, let's just throw an arbitrary number, $5 or less a day or something. Sure. China's uh, definition, their line of poverty is 90 cents per day. 90 so cents when day. your line of poverty is so much lower than everyone else, then all of a sudden your numbers are inflated and this whole lifting everyone out of poverty thing, you know, the accomplishments, the level of wealth that people have acquired now yeah. is staggering. But the majority of China is still very poor. Yes. Right. And absolutely. why do you think 39 people would try to risk their lives to well, find work in the UK. It's the same reason why you won't find a truck full of dead Americans in China trying to R smuggle themselves right. in. Okay, <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's quite simple. Yeah. The opportunity of a better life exists outside of China for the majority of Chinese people. Sure. I'm talking about not middle class people, mm. the, the poor people. Because honestly, in China, you can't just, oh, I'm going to work hard and I'm going to become successful. If you are born on a farm in a rural area, you're screwed. Yeah. There's no path no. to success. They, they, uh, this is the whole Xi Jinping fallacy. Mm -hmm. They've created this idea that he was like some poor peasant like on mm -hmm. a farm. Meanwhile, his parents were wildly influential. They they create yeah. this every man's story to kind of bolster the confidence sure. of the people, right? Yeah. Oh, oh you I can, can do, do it this too. too. I mean, it's to, to some lie. extent all over the world, 
if you're born in For a sure. poor situation, sure. it's difficult to break out yeah. of it. But in China, it's literally going back to a class system. You are a peasant and you're called a nong by people in China. Mm. You are nong like, means like a means farmer. country bumpkin, yeah, like basically. A farmer, yeah. basically. It's super difficult, if not impossible, to break out of that. And the only way is to try and smuggle yourself into another country. That's true. I like your the language distinction there. A lot of people don't understand. So you, people here might say like, um, oh, that's that... Uh, that poor person or whatever. Sure. In China, if you call someone a nong, mm -hmm. it's a derogatory term. So like a lot of city dwelling people will be like, oh, that's just, you don't need to talk to them. This is a farmer. What yeah. are you doing talking to a farmer? You know it, I mean? All you need to do is visit a restaurant in mm. China. Uh, very simple, even in the biggest cities, mm. and see how waiters and waitresses are treated. Yeah, like waiters. Um, they are treated like servants, mm. and uh, it, at first it's so much fun when you get there. I'm not going to lie, you're drinking, and <laughs> yeah. everyone, yeah. whenever you need someone to come to your table, you shout out, Fu Yan or Xiao Jie. Mm. You can't say Xiao Jie in some areas because mm. that means prostitute, but yeah. it actually just means miss. Mm. Um, but basically, you'll be in a restaurant and you'll hear a table over there and they're all rowdy and they'll mm. scream at the top of their lungs, Xiao Jie, which, or Fu Yuan, which means a server, right. waitress. And they'll come running and, you know, they, they have to take the shit. They just have to, you know. And, and, it's, and it's encouraged yeah. because, like, if you get a table full of drunk dudes, they yeah. will just pester and complain about every last thing just to show off that they can belittle someone else. Have you sure. seen that? It's like, got, take this back. I've know? actually got footage of that. I yeah. haven't showed it yet, but I filmed a guy being such a, such a prick in a mm. very cheap restaurant it mm. wasn't even a expensive place and he was berating the waitress because you know they didn't have something on the menu that mm. he wanted or something and he made such a stink so i filmed the whole thing and mm. one day i'll make a video about it but cool. uh, it's it's it opens your eyes to a broader sort of uh, social issue in china which right. is this whole class system right so anyway back to the guys in the truck yeah. They obviously are trying to find a better life in the UK, and they are doing this by smuggling themselves, paying what's called a snakehead uh -huh. um, to get them over the border. Right. And unfortunately, uh, it didn't work out for them. And I guess what happened is they must have suffocated because it's a refrigerated truck. Mm -hmm. That means that they seal. Mm -hmm. And I know that all the, they call them clandestines, the ones that come over in trucks into the UK. And I know that when you cross over the borders, they usually stick like an oxygen probe into the back of the trucks and they can actually uh, detect if, sorry, I think it's a carbon dioxide mm, probe. Sense, so, yeah, yeah, and they can detect if people are breathing in mm, there. Mm. So maybe they were sealed off to try and defeat that mm. and it just didn't work out. You anyway, know, that's my speculation. Um, How one, did China turn, like make a mistake with this? Yeah, so this is, this kind of blew my mind. Mm. I actually had a patron send me this. Um, China Daily is like the, the state-run mm. newspaper, right? Yeah. And their English version, it's called Global China Daily, Mm -hmm. the, it, you'll laugh so hard if you read most of the news out of there. It's just you mean the, the most, Global Times? No, this is this oh, is a different China Global Daily, yeah. China. Okay, China. This is the most unbelievably like one-sided pro-China CCP mm -hmm. news source you've ever seen. Maybe other than the Global Times. Right. Um, but anyway, they actually reported on this. That was my first shock. My second shock was they include included this quote. I'm going to read this. Okay. okay. Maurice Wren, chief executive of the Refugee Council, said, This is truly tragic news, but depressingly predictable and avoidable news. If you deny people safe and regular travel routes to find safety, you are leaving them with no choice but to risk their lives on utterly perilous journeys and in the hands of criminal gangs. These gangs are a symptom of a much deeper problem, namely government's failure to provide safety to those who desperately need it. What do you... I... I've never read anything like that in Chinese media. No, what they're saying there is that it's the UK's fault for not providing a clear, easy way for these people to have gone in, which is absolute garbage. Right, but this quote clearly is blaming yeah, China. Yeah, that, yeah right. I mean, <laughs> you can tell, but they have put it in there with the idea that mm. they're blaming the UK immigration process. Do you think the editor actually just didn't understand that? I think so. That's crazy. I think so. We'll they, keep an eye on it. See I'm if it gets pretty taken sure it'll get taken down. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. let's move on to something a little more... Um, what should we say, like, enlightening? I hope the next bit is a little more enlightening, it's, it, a little well, more... a little lighthearted, light I should hearted. say. Let's have a look. Um, okay, so the next thing we're going to show you is actually quite lighthearted. Oh, yes, it's this... great. <laughs> okay, well, let's show you what's kind of happening here. This, what what game was this? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. It was a basketball yeah. game of sorts. Basketball game. Okay, for those of you who don't know what's going on with the basketball... <laughs> it was a Clippers game. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um They've got like these cameras that go around the crowd yeah. to just basically show people celebrating. So this little kid, not this guy, by the way. Um, let's see. This other little kid, he decided that he's going to 
There he is. He's, he's got his LA Clippers yeah, jersey. Yeah, he's getting the attention. He sees, oh yeah, the camera's on me and... <laughs> <laughs> fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. Yeah, fight for freedom, stand with Hong Kong. Now I want you to watch mm. how quickly the cameraman reacts, okay? okay? So look, he's got this out. The cameraman's like, what's that? Oh wait, let me get the hell out of there. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's mean, wonderful. Props to this guy. Absolute He's mad lad. Super, super funny. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know the situation, mm. because of how the NBA um, basically is being kowtowing mm. to China, um, everyone's pissed off. They're like, you're, sta- you're standing on our freedom of speech. Mm. If you're going to be that way... It's we're an gonna, American yeah, sporting yeah, company. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to just... Basically, <laughs> p- piss on your parade, right. and they're gonna we're, we're gonna go to your games, and we're gonna put up like free Hong Kong T-shirts. Right. We're gonna wear them. They they kick people out for doing mm. this, by the way. But people are like, you know what? Live games is the best because mm. they can't censor that. No. So, you know, I mean, they're not publicly playing these games in China, but there's so many illegal streams right there. So yeah. a lot of uh, probably millions of Chinese people just saw that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's the whole point: is that uh, you know. That game won't be able to be aired in China if you show it. Yeah, under no, the current no, no. climate, they're not being shown anyway. Most of them, so mm, illegally, anyway. you can. Well, apparently, the, the all the games with uh, LeBron James are being played. Mm, interesting. Yeah, that's what I've recently seen is that they're playing those games, but like other games that with the uh, Rockets or whatever are not. Hmm. Anyway, it's something to look into. Yeah. Anyway, that's what that's all that about. That kid's a legend, though. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that kid's a super He's legend. Awesome. Yeah. Well done. Well done. <laughs> okay, so, oh, yeah, it's time for our next segment, isn't it? It so, is. No, 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 it's our, not. Oh, it's time it for not. some... Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. It's yeah, okay. you know, no just worries. getting used to this. Uh, no, it's time it's, for some... We're still jokes. on the first segment. Oh, is it on the first yeah, segment? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Let's get back to that. It's okay. This is a quick one. This is some old news, mm-hmm. okay? Um, remember when the Huawei CFO was arrested? Mm-hmm. Meng. Meng, Princess Meng. They found on her... Um, what did they find? Not a Huawei tablet or a Huawei laptop or a mm-hmm. Huawei... F- well, they did find one Huawei phone. We'll talk about it. But they actually found a MacBook, an iPhone, and an iPad. Sure. Okay. But the police actually released this little... It's like a mugshot, basically. Mm. Well, this this shows you everything that she had electronics mm. on her. She has a MacBook Air, which is the top of the line one at the time, uh, an iPad Pro... Mm-hmm. Um, an iPhone 7 Plus, mm-hmm. a couple of SIM cards, and uh, a Huawei Mate 20 RS Porsche design, which is like their weird luxury Porsche phone, which costs about $2,500 mm. uh, new. Uh, but that's kind of one of those like do, do as I say, not as I do type things mm. because she's supposed to be the chief financial officer of Huawei, right. but all of her devices are Apple products. Mm. It doesn't end there though, does it? Nope. This is the reason we brought it up, was the uh, the founder of Huawei, mm-hmm. guilty of the exact same thing. Yeah, so, you know, the actual founder, there he is at the airport. You can see this is a Chinese airport. There you can see probably mm. the Shenzhen airport or Guangzhou airport. Uh, it looks like the Shenzhen airport mm. from what I can see. Um, With an iPad. Yeah, he has an iPad. That's the tablet that the founder of Huawei uh, uses. You know what's weird? This is a cultural distinction, but like... Mm. Everyone in the West will look at this and be like, absolute hypocrisy. It's yeah. hilarious. They don't even use their own products. Yeah. Chinese people don't care. No. They totally expect that. Sure. Oh, he's rich, so of course he uses Apple. Yeah, rich people use Apple. Yeah. They, R- rich they don't people care. don't use Huawei. No. No, no. Not Absolutely. That's no, definitely for poor people. Yeah. Huawei's for poor your average people. average person, for your middle class. But if you've got any money, you have LV bags and you have mm. Apple. That's China. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's cool. kind of funny. All right. Now, so, let's do some super chats. Do a super chat, shall we? Yeah. Sure. Um, I will be Super Chat Boy. Yes, today. okay. What's our first uh, question? Our first question comes from uh, Mats Yada. Mm-hmm. And he says, doesn't she and CCP care about appearing so insecure? So Xi Jinping, for new listeners out there, is the leader of China, CCP, Communist Party of China. Mm-hmm. They are currently appearing incredibly insecure, blocking everything. You can't call them Winnie the Pooh. They're shutting down NBA streams. Yeah. It's, it's far and wide. Sure. The biggest censorship campaign that China's ever had, at least since we got there. Yeah, right? since, since Tiananmen close. Square. Since Tiananmen. I'm saying yeah. since I wasn't there in 1989, yeah, sure, sure. bro. I was like four, yeah. uh, three. Anyway, I like this question because this is another cultural distinction. Yes. Insecurity in the West would be a bully, right? It would yeah. be a bully being like, you can't make fun of me. Don't call me that. Don't mm-hmm. call me fat. When he points out those problems and say, you can't do this, and then he bullies them, then sure. it makes him look insecure. He looks like a little piece of shit. Right? Yeah. Chinese people don't have the same definition of insecure yes, as Western absolutely. people do. And I want to give a little anecdote. Mm-hmm. When I was getting my education license, 
uh, to open my school in China. Yeah. I had to meet, you know how, how it is in China, even to do anything legitimately, you cognac. have to have meetings, you got to have your cognac, you yeah. got to have the hong baos, the bribes, mm-hmm. all this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying I bribed anyone, but there's a lot of people need to meet this it's, person and do Guanxi this and this. Guanxi is yeah. basically bribing people through favors. So taking them out for, for sure. an expensive meal, buying them cognac, collect You have all your papers in the yeah. road. You can go to the government office. You have everything ready. You won't get shit no. until you go meet these people and like give them face. This guy shows up. He was the director of education, right? Yeah. He shows up. And he's probably like 50. Okay. Brings his whole family there. And everyone in the room just starts like worshiping him, right? Because he's yeah. a government official. Everyone's like, oh, Mr. Blah, 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 whatever. And I'm just sitting here like, whatever. Yeah. He's like, oh, better be careful. I can drink a lot. You know, in China, you got to drink with everybody. Sure, sure. So <laughs> we have a couple cups. Yeah. And the guy is like stumbling, falling over. And everyone's like, wow, boss can drink so much more than the foreigners, blah, blah, blah. And mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like... I'm not going to make a competition out of this. Sure. That's petty. But, like, everyone treated it so childishly. Yeah. Then he pulls out this book, this thick-ass book okay. in English. I think it was, like, some CEO's book or whatever. The guy can't speak a lick of English, by right. the way. Okay. And he's like, I read this book. And his daughter's like, my daddy read this book. Can you read big books like this? <laughs> like, to me in English, like, the most, it was so That's embarrassing cringe. and cringe. Yeah. My point is no one thought he was insecure. Mm. Everyone's just giving him face, right? So Xi Jinping can never look insecure to Chinese people. I I also think that what the West sees as insecure, a lot of Chinese people see as strength. Strength, right. They think it's strong. Mm. Oh, he doesn't like people making fun of him, so he's going to just block a a Chinese, I mean, a, a children's cartoon. Right. You know, bam. Oh, that guy said something bad. So instead of being strong enough to accept a little criticism. He's just like bans everything. Right. They'll see it as strength and it'll right. actually just instill more fear. Right. That's actually a really you know? good point. That's yeah. a really good point. Cool. I'm going to do another one real quick. Okay, sure. we got quite a few pouring in. Sure. Uh, fried cheese macaroni ball. That sounds delicious, <laughs> okay. by the way. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Eat the hell out of yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, you seen Bart Baker shilling for China now? Sad. He actually just did a video uh, yesterday mm. about that. Uh, long story short, I don't want to get into that, why I had to take that down, but it will be back. So it'll be back. Um, so yeah. don't worry about that. But yes, we saw it. It's sad. Uh, YouTube was demonetizing all, all his stuff. Mm. So like, I guess it pushed him over the edge and he wanted to Look, a lot of money. A lot of people will sell themselves out sure. for money in mm. China because it's easy money. You know, back in the day, they used to have a saying, big in Japan. Yeah, yeah. It's the same, same. thing, big yeah. in China. If you're big in China means you're probably very irrelevant anywhere else. Sure. You know, it, I'm, I'm serious. Think of any anyone that's very famous in China. You won't see them outside of China unless it's like an A-list Hollywood celebrity. And then sure. again, it's because of Hollywood. There's actually a brilliant thing you can do. If you're in China, sometimes you'll hear like English songs that you've never heard before, but every Chinese person at the karaoke knows them. Yeah. Do you remember that song like God is a Girl or whatever? Yeah. And, uh, that's not a song. Take Me to Your Heart. Yeah. You know. Well, God is a girl is wasn't a song in the West. It was like some random EDM German thing. Yeah, but it was like number one. Yeah, in China. It's you know interesting I mean? that. Yeah, it's super interesting. But the base, the basic, basically, what we're getting at here is that it's very possible to become famous very quickly. Yeah, in yeah. China, and you don't need to. First of all, you don't need to look good. Nope. You don't need to be attractive. You don't need to be skilled either. Nope. You just have to say the right things and have the right kind of message and be mm. a foreigner. Mm. It's it ties into the whole white monkey thing. Um, and Which that, is what my video is about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I hope you get that back up soon because it's hilarious. Okay. Last anyway. one real quick. Uh, mm-hmm. Same guy, Mas Yada. Uh, I was recently surprised to see Chinese propaganda in my country, uh, Finland, via Chinese co-finance film. According to the movie, Chinese food cures cancer and our culture and people suck in comparison. That's horrible. That sounds par for the course. I mean, fair enough if they're going to like show the movie or whatever, but that's a pretty offensive message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. Boy. It's terrible. Thank you, though. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I mean, I, I don't let's really have on. anything to weigh on on that. Okay. So let's move on to our next, mm-hmm. which is our main segment, as everyone knows, is, is Soft Power Hour. Nice. Okay. We've got quite a lot to talk about here in Soft Power Hour. Yeah, we do. So we're going to start out again with something a little bit, you know, fun and lighthearted. So mm-hmm. let's just get past our... our oh, this guy. is beautiful. Okay. Let's get us out of the picture so people can see. For those of you who can't see what's going on, there's, this is an article. Uh, there's a picture of a very effeminate looking man that's very popular in China. They call them Xiaoxian Rou, which mm-hmm. means a little fresh meat. And uh, the headline reads, Official report blames CIA for rise of feminine China, well, male celebrities in China. 
Okay, so what what do you have to say about that? They freaking love blaming the CIA for everything. <laughs> CIA is the problem. They're behind all everything. Of, all of China's problems. I mean, yeah. your friend Dave is in the CIA. Apparently, Apparently so. we are now. Oh, dude, you know how many times they call me CIA? Yeah, dude, all time. I'm. I get. See, that's my biggest hate comment. Is yeah. I'm in the CIA. Oh, you you CIA FBI. It's dude, like, okay. You give me a lot of face for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to read what that says? Sure. It says. Uh, I'll just read the highlight. Uh, basically, it says condemns the rise of feminine male artists and pinpoints their origins to Johnny and Associates, a talent agency started by an American-born Japanese businessman, Johnny Kitagawa. Mm -hmm. It claims that Kitagawa colluded with the CIA to weaken the male temperament of Japanese society, which led to the effeminization of celebrities across Asia spreading to China. Yeah, now this is based on a report. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's a Chinese report. The report's called, Do You Know How Hard the CIA Is Working? <laughs> Question mark. So oh. it's not that... It's not that, that youngsters... Is a stretch. <laughs> it's not that youngsters <laughs> in China are just into K-pop and J-pop and like just the fashion is shifting. No, yeah. no, no, no. The CIA yeah. is making kids into girls. Yeah, that's the whole point. Is the CIA planted a seed in Japan to make them effeminate and then that spread to Korea and China. That's what they're getting at. So it's the CIA's fault. Yeah, yeah. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need to say that. I mean, jeez. Jeez Louise. Okay, I just thought that's kind of funny. So, like we said, the title of this is The Blame Game's Ramping Up. Mm. China has an issue. The biggest issue I ever came across in China, honestly, is the fact that China, as in the government of China, and by extension, the society of China can take no criticism. Mm. Whenever something is pointed out that is incorrect, or maybe not even incorrect, just tasteless or somehow perceived as being bad they will not take responsibility mm. they will always blame an external source now this is not new by the way this has been going uh. on for centuries all right that's just the way china operates but these days oh my word every single thing that is perceived as being immoral or bad in china is blamed on the west or blamed mm. on someone else blamed on the japanese blamed on the koreans blamed mm -hmm. on the this Try to find any article in any state media that blames anything on China or Chinese no. people. No, absolutely you know? not. No. I not mean, like, all. even when you have massive drug busts with, like, whole towns making meth for export, Dude, yeah, they'll blame it village. on the fact that there is a market in other countries for it. So it entices people to do it. Yes. It's not, it's never anyone's fault. I, I, I stand by it. Like, I have never seen China criticize itself. No. And I mean, you see... Every other Western country will not stop criticizing itself. Sure. It's like every single Western person, like a college kid you ever meet, all they can do is rag on about it's, how shit their government is and putting you down. And We can say it's like an East Asian thing as well, but like look at South Korea, look at Taiwan and stuff. There, there's no shortage of self-criticism. No, right? absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> it, one might perceive it as insecurity. And I, I yeah. wanted to say this, and this, is, this might piss some people off. Mm. I know a lot of Chinese people that will be men and stand up. Yeah. and take the blame for their actions, right? Yeah. But although we usually blame the Chinese government for this the, these kind of bad attributes, yeah. this is one scenario that the government probably has something to do with it, let's sure, be clear. Sure. But it is, by and large, part of Chinese society not to lose face and yes. never to take the blame. Yes. You always push it on someone else if it's convenient. That's, the problem with that is that there's no one there stopping them. Right. This is what the, go the government actually encourages this kind oh, of yeah, behavior. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when the government of your country is encouraging you to push the blame on other people, why would you not? No. no. Like, seriously, if your government said to you, oh, let's start blaming Martians for right. the fact that we're obese. Right. Um, and everyone's like, yeah, screw those Martians. It's freaking Martians. That's why we're all fat, you know? Mm. Uh, you know, that's kind of what's going on here. It's sure. stupid. That's an interesting analogy. <laughs> <laughs> freaking Martians. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah, totally so, agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely, we just thought this was hilarious. Yeah. So the biggest stretch yeah. I've ever seen. Let's move on to something a little more serious. Okay. Okay. Something that rings close to home. Okay. okay? The, there's a Queensland student again. Wow. Australia. Australia. <laughs> Remember, everybody, Australia <laughs> belongs to China. Here's more proof. Uh, let me give you the gist. I did want to read the whole article, but it's maybe a bit long. It's quite long, right? I'm going to give you the gist of what happened mm -hmm. here. There's this guy. Okay. His name's Drew Pavlo. All right. And uh, basically, he's one of the organizers of some of these uh, pro-Hong Kong sort of protests, yeah. pro-democracy protests in Queensland, right? Uh, at the University of Queensland. He was singled out 
and actually mention by name. Let's move on to the, the next bit. This this is the part that that's actually really um, bad. Is that mm. this? He's twenty, by the way. So he's a young he's a young man. He's twenty mm. years old. He feels you know deeply about this kind of stuff. He's yeah. organized this thing. Um, <clears throat> so he was actually mentioned by name not only uh, in the Global Times, which Our is favorite, yeah. you know the it's actually China state newspaper it yeah. belongs to the government what say, what is said in the global times is something that the government is condoning basically sure. it's it's representative of the government um, but also in chinese language newspapers in australia mm. now what's even worse is then the dr xu jie which turns out he's a professor at the university accused pavlo in a formal statement of separative separatist activities now this, pavlo's not chinese no, he's Obviously. not. He's not. But you know, this Dr. Xu Jie is actually not only an, a professor, you know, at the university, but he's he's also high up in the consulate, ah, the Chinese gotcha, consulate. Gotcha. Okay? So, um, what a surprise! Yeah. So let's let's get to that. Wait. So he accused him in Australia of separatist activities, despite him, this guy, right? Yeah. This what's this guy's name again? Uh, Pavlo. Pavlo. Name? Okay. Yeah. Drew. Drew Pavlo. He accru- accused Drew, one of his students. Yeah. Of separatist activities a capital crime in china yes and through official channels so it's in the government official uh, but he's not chinese no he's not chinese but do you you maybe you can tell people the kind of reaction that this would cause within the chinese community at large oh i mean give me a break i mean you would be crucified basically right you'd be dragged through the streets in china if they found out but he's in australia Okay, let me just get back to the fact that, that this is the Consul General of the People's Republic of China in Brisbane. This right. Dr. Xu Jie, he's the Consul General. So he's not only like very high up, mm. he's also this uh, university professor, you know, he's obviously got some kind of a, a deal. How yep. does that work, by the way? Why is a Consul General a university professor? So if you're a Consul General, you're in the CCP. Of by course. association, for sure. Yeah, so you're part of the Chinese government. So you're part of the Chinese Communist Party. You have internal information. You're mm-hmm. operating in a foreign country that does that doesn't see eye to eye with your political, mm-hmm. you know, definition. And you're educating the youth. Yes, you're an adjunct professor at the university too. Again, this is why Australia belongs to China because they've allowed the Chinese government to infiltrate their system so badly. Now here's where it gets even worse. After this formal statement by this consular general se- accusing this guy of separatist activities. This guy was told by the university to then remove any anti- anti-China tweets from his social media. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. The university told Drew yes. to remove social media. Yes, anti-China social media. He must remove it. After this... But freedom of speech is protected under the Australian constitution. No, it's not, apparently. <laughs> okay, Australia doesn't believe in freedom of speech. Is this a public speech. university? Yeah, the, the University of Queensland. Holy shit. Yeah. So, Australia, you do belong to China. Prove me wrong. I should get one of those little stands. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you should. <laughs> That's actually mind-blowing. Now, the thing is, this university student has since, of course, received death threats. Yeah, of course. Of course. All we're of his social media has that, been... Yeah. It happens to us all the time. Mm. Uh, you might not see it that much because we're constantly blocking, um, you know, attacks against, yeah, yeah, sure. against our videos and stuff. But uh, we're always being flagged and all oh, that yeah. stuff. But the amount of death threats that we receive or threats to beat us up or to attack our family and mm. stuff... They're just usually completely hidden from you, but they're, they're constantly being put there. But for someone who's not prepared for this and you suddenly have a state-backed coordinated attack, because it is state-backed, mm. the, the Chinese government in their own newspaper said that he is responsible for these um, anti-separatist activities. <laughs> activities. And also this consul general is now saying it and other Chinese language newspapers in Australia where he lives is saying this, mm. you know. So everybody who goes to the school, their parents and grandparents are reading this Chinese language newspaper that says Pavlo has organized these anti-China protests. He's a separatist. And they're saying to their, you know, sons and daughters who attend the university, oh, that guy, Pavlo, in your school, he... Is anti-China. He's a bad man. So what are these guys going to do? They're going to go in and they're going to start attacking the guy. Mm. They've been putting up posters around the university with his name on it, like saying, do not insult China, all this kind of crap. He's basically being targeted by hate mobs mm. because of the Chinese consul general making statements. I'm not surprised at the hate coming out of this, but I mm. am surprised that a professor, was mm. he fired, by the way? No. 
No, but he's being taken to court. Oh, okay. By Pavlo. Because oh, okay. Pavlo... The thing is, he has no protection. Mm. This is what you can see is what's happening here is... This is how China wins. Mm. Okay? Is the university is too much of a politically correct, under the thumb of China, piece of shit university to stand in and actually support their own student mm. and the rights of this Pavlo character, they would rather capitulate to the to CCP. To a foreign national who yeah. works for the CCP. Yes, they would rather capitulate and throw him under the bus and make him student. delete his, you know, the university telling him to delete his anti-China That's That's crap. what made my mind blow. Yeah. You can't ask someone to do that. No, 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 no. Uh, the, I just, I can't stress how important it is for us to pay attention to this particular article right. and to this particular case. Because this will show the world mm. how China rules Australia. Right. Because if they allow China to bully people in their own country like this, and there's nothing in place to protect this man. And the only way, the only protection he has is himself. He's the one taking a case against this Dr. Xu Jie, mm. um, you know, demanding that he removes his, you know, withdrawals th this uh, statement of his, which, by the way, is not going to help him in the long run anyway, because no. the damage it is says done. He, he needs an apology. Yeah, he wants uh, an apology. Another funny point yeah. here is that yeah. he's suing him for $50,000. Right. But he doesn't want the money. No. He's going to donate it to Amnesty International to help the Uyghur <laughs> Muslim minority. If he, yeah, if he press. wins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he wins, that'd be hilarious. Man, China, what a villain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, okay, quite seriously, though, this is incredibly serious. Areas because right. this is how the CCP operates. Mm. It's through coercion. It's through intimidation. Yeah. It's through um, withholding of funds, things right. like that. And if this doesn't turn out correctly, this will prove. I'm going to make a huge. Oh, that deal would be out a huge this. win for China. Yeah. yeah. If if this guy has to shut up right. and he doesn't win this case, uh, his own country, then we can say. 100% that Australia is 100% under the thumb of China. Mm. I mean, they're already flying their, the Chinese flag over their police stations and mm. things like that. Uh, there's almost no hope. If mm. you're Australian, look this up. See if you can help this guy. You know? Yeah, at least, yeah like, for seriously, sure. Seriously, this is, this is absolutely Make a big deal ridiculous. out of this. Yeah. yeah. Don't let this kind of thing go on under your nose. It, the principle is too important. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I think we can move on from this. But That's this, insane. This wow. really pissed me off because it yeah. hit so close to home. Well, thanks for we, explaining yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, we, we experienced the same amount of attacks and things from sure. the Chinese national Yeah, a lot of camaraderie there. there. Oh, sorry. Um, that's okay. So, yeah, just to um, yeah. wrap that up. That's insane. Keep your eyes on this, guys. And if you're, like, you, like Winston said, if you're in Australia, like, keep up to date on this. Mm. We're very curious to see what happens. Uh, we're going to talk about our, you got to understand China, friends. You just so, gave it away. Okay. Well, no, I think they heard that. So. Okay. Well, forgot for those new viewers again, yeah. uh, there's a constant meme on the show yeah. um, of this vlogger. He's a YouTuber, actually, mm -hmm. and also a Chinese media vlogger. Yeah. Um, this was the first video he put out, and we love it. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to play a little clip, mm -hmm. and there's going to be a little bit of Chinese because he's going to speak some Chinese, and sure, we'll, we will we'll translate for you. Um how, we'll play his first clip yeah, first. Let's do it. Ready? Let's do this. Yes, I'm a foreigner and I'm here to say it. I love China. But China is my home. But China is my land. But China is my teacher, my brother, my friend. You gotta understand China. You gotta respect China. I tell you now, come. Okay, let's pause here for a sec. Okay. Um, we're not on the screen. Oh, yes, uh, we are now. Uh, we're back. Um, <laughs> so this guy, mm. his name is Xin Shi Dan Dan. Mm -hmm. uh, he is wildly, po much more popular than we are, yeah, even in, on YouTube. In China and, uh, and on yeah, YouTube, YouTube as well. Yeah, yeah. Millions of subscribers. Right. Huge. <laughs> so his uh, his whole story for you guys, for all the people that wanted to understand the meme, right? Yeah. He's not a bad guy. So <laughs> no, no, you no. guys need to calm down in the comments, by the way. <laughs> this guy, I believe he's French. Um, he, since he was two years old, was fascinated with China. Yeah. He learned Chinese. And he dedicated his whole life to this. So that video that you just saw, he was quite young when he made that. That's definitely a state-sponsored video, though. Um, we, you know. we can speculate, right? Well, I mean, it's got all the CGT and stock footage and sure, stuff. Sure, but we need the receipts. Okay, all okay. right. Either way. Um, um, either way, it doesn't matter. Mm. So we can say kind of shilly video, kind of funny. Kind we've of been shilly, yes. We've been memeing on it for yeah. a long time, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But this is, this is the fascinating thing. So his, his uh, story is this. He does these kind of videos, then all of a sudden he just does uh, Chinese language videos. So he's eating food, he's just showing China, having yeah. fun, interacting yeah. with people, very lighthearted, mm -hmm. totally innocent content. All in Chinese. All in Chinese. His Chinese is amazing. It's for the Chinese uh, audience. Yeah. So he goes to uh, Australia and does 
uh, he did, did a bunch of stuff like this, but he does this thing where he tries to like survive. Yeah. And he tries to survive uh, on this island. And the videos are like pretty hairy. Like he's losing all this weight. He's like can't find fresh water, all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Whether you believe they're true or not, they, they seem quite believable to me. Something horrible happened to him. Okay, yeah. Now okay, this, so this, let's look at this. Before we play this clip, this is a cautionary tale for anyone yes. who wants to shill for China. Mm. Whether it's genuinely shilling or just shilling for money. Right. This is super cautionary. Okay, so let's listen to this. Okay, we're going to do... We'll do a blow-by-blow blow translation. Blow by blow? It so, looks a bit low, by the way, maybe... Um, I don't know. A little bit. I will. I will. Um, basically, he says, I'm going to make this video because people are attacking me. Mm -hmm. To ma somebody just means to basically scold them or mm -hmm. attack them. You know, so it's like, ni ma wo, mm -hmm. you know, bia ma ta, that kind of thing. All right. Oh, yeah. Let me put up the volume like he said. Sorry. Okay. So he, here he's saying that he saw a lot of people's videos and comments, comments saying yeah. that his survival trip in, in Australia was fake. All right. But that's not what this is about. Oh yeah, it hurts me in my heart. Mm. Mm. Almost died twice, it was really difficult to make, you know, all that kind of crap. But if you think it's fake, that's up to you. That's yeah, your freedom. Yeah, you, you can think it. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care about that. Okay, so he's making this video because of another issue, and that is people think that he's racist against China. Um, and this is this is the part that really gets me okay mm. somebody who has literally done so much to try and promote china in a positive way this guy you gotta understand china right. you gotta love china you, you know he is literally if anyone ever saw him they cringe how much he's right. shilling for china and, and in a good way in his because he honestly believes in that sure so he honestly wants to promote china in a very positive way. I, I think light. he's quite genuine. Yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's him from him. It's coming right. from the heart. He genuinely he loves, loves China. Fans. He loves China. He wants to promote it. And he's being called a racist and anti-China. And he is being attacked in the same way that we're attacked, in the same way that anyone who's an enemy of China is being attacked. Now, you guys will not believe what set this off. Okay, Jesus. a couple years ago, mm -hmm. his editor, by the way, he didn't Not choose. Him. He didn't Not choose him. any of this stuff. His editor had a background music, a BGM, yeah, very quiet, and it was a hip hop song mm -hmm. that had one lyric in it that said Fu Manchu. Yeah. Okay, he didn't know about it. The guy's French, for God's sake. Yeah, right. His editor put that in. It was just background music, and just recently, it comes out. All these Chinese people are like, no shit, that's racist. I heard Fu Manchu is racist. And his fans went ape, yeah. basically forced out of China. Yeah. Millions of fans, millions and millions of fans, maybe billions of views. Yeah. He is forced out of China. He has not made a video since. He mm. got pushed out because of that one tiny little mistake that he didn't even make. He didn't make it. He goes on for like eight minutes. We're going to show up yeah. for like eight minutes just to apologize. But he never. one thing I appreciate about this, he didn't back down. He, got, he said... Listen, guys, I want to believe that you guys, my fans out there, are genuine mm. and are not really going to crucify me for something like this. Yeah. I will take the blame. I will take the hit. But this is kind of unfair to me. It must you, be devastating to him. It destroys your life. Mm. His whole life was based on this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. He was never once critical of China or Chinese people. No, he was just He always... was a, a fantastic spokesman for China. You find this happening a lot. People that have dedicated a lot of their time... Uh, to China, um, right. especially to learn the language, and mm. you know, which is not an easy task, mm. um, and put so much of their life into China, um, they become incredibly disappointed when they realize that, you know, just like that, they can lose it all mm. because somebody decided that you're bad that day, right. that week. Uh, this has happened to a lot of people. Remember that poor student of mine, uh, sorry, subscriber, what am I saying, student, that subscriber 
who worked so hard to win the Mandarin competition. He was yeah. voted. He was voted like the cultural exchange king or whatever for between the UK and uh, China because he did so well in his manner. And there he is singing communist songs in his Mao suit. He did everything. Mm. And then some random online magazine wrote an article about how sneaky foreigners are stealing Chinese girls. And they used his picture of him on stage speaking Chinese. And they're like, this like innocent dude. Yeah. And they'll trick you by learning Chinese. Right. And he got hate and he yeah. got attacked and yeah. everything. This poor guy who'd dedicated so much mm. to the Chinese culture and to Chinese people was made into an enemy. Yep. And uh, we're seeing it with the NBA. We're seeing it with... Oh, we've, we've had to every... go through. Remember when the, the article used my, me and my wife's wedding photo to say, why are foreigners so always cheating on their wives? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my word. No. Anyway. I mean, look, it's, it's happened tons. You know my Our Chinese Girls Easy yeah. video? They kept taking things out of context. I was in the Global Times. Yeah. You know, this, yeah. this stupid state-run mm. newspaper that slanders people. I was in there like three times. They even drew you. Yeah, they drew like a they picture, drew a like a, a cartoon of an evil guy in a suit remember, with flowers. Remember one of our friends actually drew a picture of the editor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like a demon or something. Yeah, it was super funny. Oh, super funny. Uh, yeah, that was amazing. Um, it, it's a ridiculous situation where a nation, mm. and this is literally like a nation, mm. is so controlled by what the government says. And the powers that be say that if they say this person is an enemy of China, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if they've been a long time fan. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what that person has done. Bam, you're an enemy and there's nothing you can do about it. That's what gets my that's what gets my goat sometimes is you get a lot of these people that are like, listen, guys, I don't really I don't really sympathize with a lot of the stuff you say because none of this stuff has happened to me. I've also been in China for so and so years. Our point is not this. Our point is not that everything that happened to us or him or all these people is going to happen to you. But the possibility is there because yes. you become fodder the moment you are decided to become fodder. Yeah. It's not your choice. No, it's You not don't get choice. to apologize and be like, everything's cool now. That's not how it works in yeah. China. Yeah, it's not. So, so yeah. it's, it's kind of heartbreaking to Dude, see. Dude, I feel wicked. Like, yeah. honestly, he was. we were memeing on him, right? Yeah, but, but it's funny. He but deserves it. Yeah, because it's hilarious. If you put yourself out there, you, you know, people meme on us all the time. That's sure. entirely what he it is. He does not deserve what happened. No, there, he though. doesn't Jeez. deserve that at all. Especially after the amount of shilling that he did. Right. You know, China is my home. Right. Chi China is not your home, obviously, because they think you're racist. Mm. You know, it's not your land because you're Because of something Chinese. you didn't even do. Yeah, it's not your fault. Mm. You got to look at it the way it is. You got to look at it as that, you know, you can love China like we do. Mm. You can love the Chinese culture. But unfortunately, you will, if at some point, fall victim to something like this. And you got to be able to take that. Especially if you're in media. Yeah. No, it's pretty, pretty rough. Yeah. It's pretty rough. Anyway, my heart goes out to Shin Shidan Dan. I, I tried to reach out. Yeah. I couldn't get a hold of anyone around him. But I hope he starts making videos again because that's pretty effed up. I don't know, that, that would probably completely take all the wind out of his sails, to be honest, because the whole point of him making his videos was... Maybe take a different know. direction. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't want to see someone's life collapse because of this. I think he'll recover. Yeah. We'll see. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll let you guys know, but uh, right. we're not going to stop using his you got to understand China. No, that will always be a meme. <laughs> since done, done. I'm sorry. Yeah, That's so, hilarious. Yeah, you did that to yourself, <laughs> mate. That's entirely your problem. And we, we can laugh about stuff we used to say, too. Yeah, right? absolutely. You can... Feel free to use our footage. In fact, if you want, We've you can, said some dumb you can shit. edit, take some of my videos, chop out little bits completely out of context to make me look very bad and, mm. you know, or very good. It's you entirely know, up to you. You know what? He, he wouldn't do that. I know he wouldn't. He was like a super nice, <laughs> genuine guy and all of his videos were not confrontational. Yeah, absolutely. Unlike some people. Let's uh, continue then, shall we? Or is it... Uh, is uh, that... It's up to you. Okay, well, let's just see. Oh, hang on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we've got one more little thing. Okay, in we can our, do this first. Uh, this is a yeah. another. Uh, we're kind of breaking it up with positive, negative. Yeah. This is hilarious. It's super. Okay, take it away, Simon. Okay, so this was. I, I was surprised to see such like rural news from China to be in Western news. It's hilarious. So this guy, this businessman in Nanning, this is he's a Guangxi. real estate developer. Right. Yeah. Guangxi is like uh, the poor what, wait, version of Guangdong. In, wasn't it in Guangdong? No, it's in Nanning. Okay. Guangxi. Right. Nothing. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> this mistake. picture is from the actual court. So okay. what happened? Guangxi is a bit wild, and th mm. this is this Chinese people stereotype. Mm. Guangxi province is right next to Guangdong. She she means west, and Dong means east. So yeah. they're Guang. It's yeah. kind of like a Cantonese region. Yeah. But because of the proximity with Southeast Asia, Guangxi is 
a lot of the drug trafficking goes through there, human trafficking, uh, the arms smuggling, which okay. does exist in China, by the way. Um, that happens in Guangxi province. So I wasn't surprised to see this news in Guangxi. But anyway, this is the Guangxi People's Court. What happened was a businessman hired someone, a couple million, I think it was a couple million RMB, two million, two million RMB. RMB, to kill another rival businessman. Yeah, it's another real estate developer. You, you guys don't understand, you gotta understand China. Gotta understand China. <laughs> the hitman thing in China is actually a very big business, especially in Guizhou, Hunan, and Guangxi. Not just hitmen, but hired thugs. Hired thugs, You yeah. know, they go and they'll smash up a business that's a rival business. Stab your business. girlfriend. They'll beat kind of people up, right. loan sharks, all this, it's it's a thing. It's definitely a thing. But these guys, this is the most oh, fantastic chabador, like almost situation you've ever heard. He goes and hires him. That dude's like, you know what? I could not only keep some of this money, but I could outsource this job to someone yeah. cheaper. So he outsources it maybe for like a million, right? Yeah, for a million. So yeah. now the third guy is involved. Yeah. That guy has the same idea. Yeah. And it goes down the chain of command. You can look at this photo. There's six guys here. This happened six times to the point where the last guy just couldn't do the job. Yeah. Right? They all got arrested and they're all going to jail for like different amount of times. But yeah. it's just so funny that no one could commit. <laughs> yeah, well, you see what ended up happening because the, the first guy was smart. He's like, OK, I right. got two million RMB. I'm going to. That's clever. I'm going to offer a million RMB to right. this other bad guy and he's going to do it for me. Mm. Then that guy offered um, 500,000. OK, then the next guy offered uh, 250,000. Mm. But then he said, but when the deed's done, then you'll get more. Right. But then the final guy in the chain, he offered the last guy only 100,000 RMB right. and nothing else. Right. It's only 100,000 RMB. Right. So the guy was like, wait a second, 100,000 RMB? That's not enough money for me to like kill someone. So he actually contacted the victim. Right. And he said, listen, right can you out. just pretend to be dead? Right. Can you fake your own death? Yeah. Then I can keep the money and everything will be okay. And then he like, just was like, no. And he went to the cops <laughs> and they all got arrested. I love it's, it. Freaking oh, hilarious. What a great story. It's love so it. funny. It's so funny. Yeah. Anyway, so that it's, was uh, that lightened my day, right? My absolutely. day. Absolutely. Let's hit some uh, uh, super, chats. super chats. Yeah. Okay, good. Mm. Uh, next, we have uh, his shadow X. He says, Do you all plan on visiting Chinatown in Chicago? Also trying superior Chicago pizzas from places like Uno's. I very much disagree with that. Appreciate the super chat, but I'm going to have to fight you in a duel. I want, um, I want to have a Chicago I'll pizza. I'll eat one with you. I just I know you'll prefer New York pizza. Yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, eventually we'll head over to Chicago, yeah, Chi-Town. Yeah, got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Bay Area 852 says, ditched my iPhone for a Galaxy made in Vietnam. You're doing your part. Yeah, That's good job. Cool. A lot of stuff. I think it was like uh, the other day, my uh, daughter had to get like a vaccine. Mm -hmm. My tradition, the only time we eat fast food is if she gets a shot. Mm -hmm. So she got a Happy Meal because they are doing like some Pokemon thing. And the toys were actually made in Vietnam. Which oh, is, sweet. I was very surprised. Well, um, I just built a Hackintosh mm -hmm. so that I didn't have to support Apple by buying an Apple machine. Ooh, we're going to get sued. No, we're not. No. We bought, <laughs> we built a fictional Hackintosh. Yeah, we fictionally built, built a Hackintosh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew McCarthy says, in your experience, is the cost of living in major Chinese cities like Shanghai more or less than the cost in Western cities like London or New York, it's tricky. Um, it's more. It's it's more if, if you, you want, want the same lifestyle. Yeah. You know, you have to understand. You got to understand. Um, <laughs> in in a place like Shanghai, if you want a big apartment mm. or a big house or something, well, if you won't get a big house. But if you want a big apartment, it's millions, horrendous, millions, millions, millions horrendously of expensive. Um, if you want a Western lifestyle, you pay a lot more. Cars and more, houses are more, you're going to pay. If you want nice, good quality food, you're going to pay more. Yeah, if you want like Western food, mm. if you want something even like sushi, right. like proper sushi, not like a It's going to be more. Thing. Uh, if you want a steak or something, you're going to be paying like three times the price of the West. If you wanted to live yeah. like a local in one of these places, it cheap. would be cheaper. It Super would be cheap. cheap. Your quality of life yeah. would tank. But, but you get parasites in your stomach and yeah. you know, you're going to live in a, a really horrible sort of living right. area. So. John Wagner with two hundred dollars, by the what? way. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Holy crap! That's amazing. Uh, that helps us a lot, especially because we get demonetized every video. Now. That's amazing. Thank you, mate. Thank you, dude. I uh, just want to say thank <clears throat> you for both of you, all your videos from the beginning. My freeloading days are over. Cheers from Kansas City. <laughs> Paying his dues. Thank That's you so amazing. much, dude. You really, didn't really have to appreciate do that. that. That's Seriously. sick. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, DK with ninety nine cents. Uh, Dan David Connolly says, "Hey guys, huge fan." Knew nothing about China before I found this channel. What's the best way for Americans to support the Hong Kong protesters? Hold up a t-shirt at a game. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, it's 
just raise awareness. Um, yeah. A lot of people don't really realize what's going on. And I don't want to sound like a funny sort of tinfoil hat guy, but if if we don't pay attention to what's going on in Hong Kong, mm. um, the kind of things that are going It'll on spread. in Hong Kong is going to spread oh, elsewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big um, time. Look you know, at Australia. Yeah. Look at Australia. Exactly. It'll be Australia next. Um, Hong Kong is still one of the most beautiful and even right now, safest cities mm, to go to. For sure. I have a subscriber who sent me a message and told me he's just spent six days in Hong Kong. That was like a day ago. And he had no issues. Mm -hmm. He did shopping. He walked around, went to restaurants, yeah. did all the usual thing. Yeah. Because Hong Kong is civilized. Mm. And even the protests are civilized. Mm. Yes, you get the, the violence Outburst. and the things here and there, but they're very isolated and they're taken care of. They're not going to throw you, you. No, absolutely not. And if you stay away from the protest areas, if you see a massive protest thing going on, get out of there. Hop mm. on the train, go somewhere else. No one's going to attack you. You'll be fine. Mm. Go do your own thing. Um, and, you know, it's still a safe, wonderful place. And if you see Hong Kong fall, you will see, you know, the rights of the Hong Kong people fall. You'll see it elsewhere, too. It will be domino. Yeah. Trust it's me. kind of like the Rhineland. Right. Anyway, uh, what have we got next? Uh, next, let's have a little look-see. Yeah. Um, actually, let's save those. Let's okay. get into our next segment. Right. We just our read next, a bunch. Sorry. Our next segment, of course, is Guanxi Corner, mm. where we talk about relationships and everything else in between. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, let's see. What have we got this time? Uh, this time, we have mm -hmm. a lady named Beth. I have not read this yet, so okay. pardon me. I'm sure. going to have to expand the text. Okay. Uh, hey, guys. My name is Beth, and I'm currently living in Chengdu, Sichuan. And I've been here for almost three years now. There's a stereotype that female English teachers or female expats in general have a hard time uh, finding relationships when living in China. Most chalk it up to the fact that most foreign men end up finding local girlfriends or wives. I guess she means Chinese. Yeah. Uh, some calling it fetishizing Asian women. Personally, I haven't been able to find a boyfriend as all of my coworkers are in a relationship with local Chinese girls. And the other expats in the city just don't seem to be interested in another random Canadian girl living in China. I'm starting to believe that some of the stereotypes. With you guys being male expats married to Chinese women, what has been your experience with female expats in China? Uh, okay. I see a big issue with that. I appreciate the letter, by the way. But. Yeah, if you're going to move to another country and mm. live there and work there, you know, um, if you're not interested in dating the local people there, then perhaps you shouldn't move there. Y yeah, I mean, like, if... Okay, I'll say this. If you're not looking for a relationship, that's not yeah. an issue. But clearly, Beth is looking for a relationship. Yeah. And in this letter, without saying it, she hasn't dated Chinese men. Yeah. So what are you doing? I find that a lot with the, um, you know, the... Look, I can't blame them, to be honest. The culture is very different. And it's very different for men uh, than it is for women. Because in China, women are still... There's still the gender role thing going on. Women are suspect, uh, expected to kind of cook and mm. clean the house and be feminine but don't get me wrong there's still freaking control freaks and they they run the household and they run the finances mm. they have the last say um it's a completely different dynamic mm. but i can see that as a western woman who's got all this used to this this women empowerment thing and you know the usual thing that goes on in the west to go to china can you imagine trying to date a Chinese man and he's like oh you know you're gonna have to cook me a meal or something she'll probably freak out see I'm gonna politely disagree okay go for it I think that the younger generation is this these gender roles are much more muted mm -hmm. and I think that the me Chinese men get much more bullied than a lot of the women dude yeah like, they get bullied seriously. okay but they're like, not they, they don't yeah if you mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of Chinese friends if they ask their mm -hmm. wife or girlfriend to cook for them mm -hmm. they like they might cook for them so if they ask for it Oh, man, they'd get their ass beat, right? Yeah, we're talking about our age. I'm, our guess, age, I'm sure, guessing sure. Beth's our age. I don't know, but yeah, oh, okay. I have no idea. My other point of slight, just slight disagreement, okay. yeah, slight disagreement is that I think the same standard that you said, the same warning, very much pertains to, to foreign men dating Chinese girls. Mm -hmm. I think the whole culture gap and all this kind of responsibility and stuff, that's absolutely exactly just as bad. It is. It, it is. is. It is, absolutely. It's like, it's... They're like a Chinese girl's not gonna bow. To, you know this fantasy of like, oh, this Asian girl or something, some like loser incel is gonna go over there and be like, oh, this Asian girl is just gonna do everything for no, me. No, absolutely so feminine. not. No. That's what I'm saying. I think it goes yeah. both ways. To be, I honest. mean, look, when you're going to date someone from a different culture, there's so much you have oh, yeah. to discover and so much you have to understand. But I will stick to my guns and say that for a woman. The things that she's expected in China to accept in Chinese society. Maybe by the family. 
definitely you, you by the family. You must have a kid. You must right, get right. pregnant. She's going to be pressured all the time. Right. Do you think Absolutely anyone, agree with that. anyone who's like in their twenties, thirties, who wants to just date a guy, wants the freaking parents-in-law or not parents-in-law, the family pressuring her and her boyfriend pressuring her to get married right. and to have a kid straight right. away? You know, it's those kind of things that are going to be a big turnoff. Sure. Um, someone also once said to me that Asians come in small, tight packages, and that's probably not what a woman's looking for. Okay. That's 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 what someone said, not me. I don't know. I have no experience. I'm going to politely disagree mm-hmm. with that. This is going to be maybe a little bit too a little too personal, <laughs> but one time <laughs> yeah. I was in the locker room at a gym. Yeah. yeah. In Inner Mongolia? Yeah, well, I mean, Inner Okay, Mongolia. no, but there are Chinese guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that that stereotype is just not true at least in that part of the world. Absolutely <clears throat> not true. It made me yeah. question my existence. But anyway, uh, that aside, I just I thought it was curious yeah. that she didn't even mention trying to date Chinese yeah. men. I mean, that's a little weird. Why, what are you doing in China then? Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, look, but the, whatever. Yeah, the, the thing is, it is an issue. Uh, it is. A, I've heard the, this complaint from a lot of yeah. my female mm. friends, you know, expat friends in China, mm. and they do find it difficult to date the locals because of the cultural differences, mm. and. They find it difficult to date, you know, foreigners there because, mm. you know, the foreigners are just, you know, busy dating locals. It's mm. tough. It's tough. Just uh, maybe try, I don't know, just go somewhere else. I didn't. I well, didn't what can I she's say? She's not even asking advice. She's just like, yeah. what's your experience? Yeah, it's very, very typical experience. Yeah. Um, that's not to say it doesn't work out. Um, I know a... I have a couple co-workers that marry Chinese dudes. Yeah, yeah. It's I know. Awesome. There's a, a, a very attractive blonde co-worker of mine from way back in the day from Florida, and she married a local Chinese guy. That's good. And, you know, they have children, and they have a fantastic relationship. I applaud that. Thank you for breaking the norm. Yeah. Because, like, seriously. Yeah, apparently... Um, hate we the, get. The, the story is that she was getting off the bus, and he bumped into her, and, like... She got pregnant. Yeah, well, not that, not that quick. But he bumped into her and she dropped stuff or whatever. It sounds like it's out of a freaking cartoon or a, a movie or something. Right. But then um, that's kind of how they met each other. And uh, he was a really nice guy. I invited him over for Christmas. And that's everything. awesome. Yeah, yeah, super cool. I like those success stories. Yeah. Please yeah. do more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I guess uh, we should do a couple super chats and then move on. Yeah, okay. Let's um, do it. Jeremiah Johnson. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Uh, my SO, significant other, sorry. Mm-hmm. I just just missed one. Um, David Connolly says, hey, huge fan, knew nothing about... Uh, I already read that. Jeremiah Johnson. I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, my SO is currently in China. Since she has been living there, I've mostly kept my criticism of the CCP to myself. Yeah. How closely are text voice chats monitored for wrong think? We mostly use WeChat very monitored yeah it's monitored i wouldn't i wouldn't be putting any criticism criticism against the ccp through that not on wechat you know it's really ridiculous Hmm. and this just proved to me that it's being monitored (laughs) oh yeah it's all this story Um, this is great so a friend of mine who's in china right now um wanted to talk to me on whatsapp so you know in order to link someone to whatsapp you need Mm. to have their phone number Mm. so i typed in my phone number to him in wechat right okay stupidly you should you should like Never do Put that. in a picture or you should, you right. know, like say it over Even voice then. or yeah. whatever. I typed it in. Literally, like, I don't know if it was half an hour later, I started to be added to spam groups like porn spam and stuff on my phone. My phone started to get messages <laughs> and like, hey, do you want to see hot pictures? Things like that. And I don't get spam. I don't because I don't do any of that weird stuff. I got spam from various different places like immediately. 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 Right. <laughs> so they've obviously like sold, they, they sell like details right, right. to make some money on the side or something, mm. uh, 10 cent. So that, it's monitored in many different ways. Mm. Um, usually what they do is if you put any criticism, they just blank it out. Mm-hmm. They don't really, there's no real repercussions. They just blank it out. But I would, mm-hmm. I'd keep it to a minimum. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I've seen way too much evidence of that. Yeah, Sorry. It's def- definitely yeah, being monitored. Don't, yeah. Use, uh, use WhatsApp. It's blocked in China, but use it or use Telegram. Right. Uh, Jacko, 1987. Thank you. Dana Powell, thank you. Dr. Ivo Robotnik. <laughs> Sonic. Eggman. Eggman. <clears throat> Please speak yeah. about the BGY plan to destroy the West exposed by Guo Wang. Oh, Wen Gui, that guy, the billionaire mm-hmm. dude, right? China is now building underground Uyghur concentration organ harvest camps. Yeah, I mean, like, mm-hmm. we've touched on it. Maybe in the future. Yeah, we'll talk about Thank that you. at some point for sure. Um, cool. You know. Otherwise, we have another uh, another thing to cover. Yes, we do. Next, we're moving on to worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, <laughs> but mainly with regards Stop. to China. It's 
it's true though. Ah! It's kind of world stuff, you know. World th- uh, today is actually kind of worldviewish yeah, for is. once. Yeah. So let's uh, move on from this ridiculous hitman thing and see what's in worldview. Our first story, of course, is going to be something interesting. Um, yes, Shaq. The person who was on the thumbnail. Let's let's move move ourselves. Do you out remember Shaq Fu? Yes. <laughs> it's a great game. Yeah, I, <laughs> That's I mean, a terrible game. <laughs> Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. Yep. I remember. Um, He's a legend. Uh, for my one cousin had like a poster of him on his wall or whatever when I was in, yeah. the, in the 90s or the 80s yeah, or something. It's a big deal. Yeah, I, I didn't care about basketball ever, so I didn't know about it. I knew who he was. Right. Everyone he, knows him. Now he's literally in every commercial of all yeah. time. Yeah, he's in like... <laughs> Papa John's, insurance, insurance, like, insurance yeah. phones. Yeah. But anyway, what yeah. did he do? Okay, I'm going to set the stage here. He was sitting at a like a kind of a Q&A thing talking about the NBA, and he was asked the question, uh, you know... What does he want to say about the uh, Moray tweets? You know, the Daniel Moray. Moray is it Moray? Is nah, that how you You know, everybody knows by now. If you don't know by now, I'll put us back in there. If you don't know by now, the manager of the Houston Rockets sent out a tweet in support of Hong Kong. And because of that, China lost its shit, banned the NBA, blocked all the preseason games off, completely canceled contracts with the NBA, sponsorships, all this kind of thing. Made a big stink. He had to withdraw, delete the tweet, and set out a kind of an apology, sort of. Um, Could have fizzled down if LeBron James didn't run his mouth. Yeah, LeBron James comes out to say that he doesn't, you know, uh, Moray doesn't understand the situation. He's uneducated in the situation, which is actually, you know, stupid because he doesn't understand. But uh, so he, he supported censorship. Yeah, he basically, basically supported censorship. Um, and so Shaquille O'Neal was asked about this, and let's beautiful let's see. man. Yeah, let's see what he said. He said. One of our best values here in America is free speech. We are allowed to say what we want to say, and we're allowed to speak out on injustices, and that's how it goes. And if people don't understand that, that's something they have to deal with. All right? I think it's kind of important that mm-hmm. he said this stuff. Well, let's sure. get us back there. Um, he did go on to say, <clears throat> it was unfortunate for both parties, and you've got people speaking out about something they don't know what they're talking about. Um, so, Moore, oh yeah, yeah. Daryl Dar- Murray was right. Whenever you see something going on anywhere in the world, you should have the right to say that's not right. So that's really, really good. Very of him. insightful. Good it's, stuff, Shaq. You know, it's tough. It's tough right now with the kind of pressure. David and Goliath, on. dude. It's what it is right now. It's it's almost like office politics in a way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're in an office, um, and you've got a boss who's just a complete piece of shit and you know you don't want to say anything that would upset the boss his name's barry that's your boss <laughs> yeah boss. No, like no bear re because like poo bear you know? oh anyway. nice nice hey, you know like so I you've like got that. this part po- this boss yeah and you know that if you say the wrong thing you might get fired sure okay and that's kind of what's going on with the nba and anyone that's attached to basketball or any kind of big thing that's currently lucrative in China, Mm -hmm. is they see China as this very sensitive boss. Mm. And if they say something wrong, they step out of line, they're going to lose their job, basically, Mm. you know, Mm. and be ostracized. And it's a very real threat. It's a very real thing that can happen to people. We're seeing it all the time. You know, people are losing their jobs. People are being attacked, getting death threats, all sorts of crap. Uh, You know, look at uh, Mac Horton, the swimmer, mm-hmm. when he said, like, you know, the, the Chinese swimmer was a drug cheat because he is, because it's proven. Mm-hmm. Look how he got attacked by all the netizens and how it's like state backed attacks. Yeah. It's just the way it goes. So you got to watch out. So mm-hmm. for Shaq to actually say that is very commendable. Mm-hmm. I agree. And you'll see, you're seeing more more people like this, like two uh, YouTubers I follow, PewDiePie and H3, yeah. have very blatantly spoken out against this stuff which is great Mm. and i like to see that people aren't being little wimps in the face of this kind of stuff because it is you're faced with accusations of racism you're faced with accusations of losing business deals all this kind of stuff can really screw you over yeah you know shaq has contracts in china but people actually standing up and doing the right thing i think it will change the climate of the bullying that we're seeing i hope Uh, it's when people capitulate to a bully it just emboldens the yeah, bully. And that's dude. what's been going on in for China, far too that's long. It's in Chinese culture, yeah. right? Emboldening yeah. the bully. They yeah. love that strength. That's why, you know, like Michael Jordan with his logo and those shops that rip off his logo and his brand being set up, he couldn't, he <laughs> tried to fight it and he couldn't. Nope. It's all this kind of crap. It's because people capitulate and mm. they just don't stand up. And so now the, the fact that people are standing up to this, 
you have to stand up to this bad behavior by China. It doesn't mean you're anti-China, by the way. Nope. It's standing up towards this bad behavior because if you want this kind of bad behavior to stop, you have to draw a line. It's standing up to a government、mm. that does not represent your ideals or best interests, and that should matter to every person out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you can't let a government like China dictate the way you think, especially dictate, outside.、Yeah. Okay. People can have the argument; they can do whatever they want in China.、Sure. Stop meddling in their affairs. Fair enough. Yeah. But when it's exported to where you are, you're going to start to care. Yeah. You should. Yeah. yeah, you should. Anyway, let's see. You see what's next on our list here. <sighs> okay. <laughs> right. So after the whole Shaquille O'Neal thing, what are we talking about? We are going to be talking about something. Nothing. That's that was our that was last.、It. That was our. That was he's just that making was a joke. He was just trying to get amped up. Yeah.、Um, so it's time to head into the Q and A. Yes, it's time for us to do Q and A, where of course we <laughs> stop introducing your questions. Oh my god! It's it's true though. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, this is a cool clip. Yeah. This is、uh, this is funny because when we were on our motorcycles here outside the stadium, they built the stadium only. To host like one event、yes. for the Asia Olympics,、yeah. it was literally never used after that. Look at the anyway, trash. Look at the trash. I didn't notice it when we were riding on it, yeah, but we、yeah. shot the drone up. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god,、like、that's an unfortunate thing、further. about China litter.、Um, no, it's, it's it's whenever people go to big events or you go to the、mm. beach or something, people literally just throw their crap Li- everywhere. Literally, they just throw their crap everywhere because they feel like it's not my job. No, and especially when you've got people coming from rural areas and、oh, stuff,、yeah. they don't have they any education.、It. They just So what they do? They throw their crap everywhere. It's the thing that always pissed me off was people that throw cigarette butts on the ground in restaurants. Yeah, like isn't that dangerous? You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I've got a bit of a gripe. You know, in restaurants, how people spit their bones and stuff on yeah, the table, yeah, yeah. on the tablecloth,、yeah. or even on the floor. Yeah, it's just normal. Yeah, the tablecloth on the tablecloth. It's like you know you're eating a chicken foot or something, and the bones you spit on the tablecloth. I'm like in a pile of spit. Can't you have? It sits there. Can't you have a bone bowl to put you? Get your a bones? bone ball. Get a bone ball.、Mm. Yeah. Anyway. That's, anyway,、uh, moving on to the question, I wanted、sure. to let that beautiful shot play.、Sure. I had to color grade the crap out of that、I、to、remember. get rid of the pollution. Yeah, it was, it was bad. I remember.、Uh, Cesario JPN says the story of、uh, CIA feminization brings up something I saw.、Mm-hmm. Hollywood is again catering to China by removing diversity and LGBT tones in films that could go there. Disney even hired a Chinese writer to create China, Star Wars. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. So. I mean, you see this huge push for、uh, politically correct culture in the West, right? Yeah, making sure everyone's included. It's an inclusive medium for media, and then China doesn't like that stuff because it's illegal to promote gay stuff. Yeah, in China,、oh, it's, it's illegal. It's completely for, illegal. They... For men to have earrings on TV. Yeah. yeah.、Um, so that's interesting. So that goes against. That's a way、mm-hmm. to get all of the left-leaning, more、uh, we can say, social. Justice apt, apt people.、Okay. Let's just say that sphere、yeah. to get them to understand how what a bully China is because they they never speak out against China. No, they、Have、don't. You notice that? Yeah, yeah, they don't. Well, you know, you know,、uh, Overwatch the Blizzard game. I think we mentioned this、yeah. last time.、Mm-hmm. Uh, in Overwatch the Blizzard game, two of the characters are supposedly gay.、Um, okay. Which、uh, tra- Tracer and Soldier seventy six is it seventy six or sixty seven?、Yeah. Whatever those two, but not in China because. <laughs> <laughs> Remember we pl- when we played Overwatch? I didn't know they were gay because、no. the Chinese version. It's like barely not. a story in the game. Yeah, I know, but they're not gay. Yeah, we、China. played the Chinese version, and they're、we? not gay. They're、yeah. not. They're not allowed to be gay. Right. So like, oh, we're just playing some straight characters here. I don't, why do characters in video games have to be gay? I don't know. Why can't they well, just be whatever you want them fair, to be in your not... own mind? Like, if you're gay, you can say it's gay.、If、yeah, I like gay, that. You can、better. say it's straight. Because then you get the, you get a choice, right? Yeah. It's more personalized. It's, it's kind of stupid that you know this kind of stuff is pushed. It shouldn't be pushed either way. No. You shouldn't be like I'm a straight, you know. Right. You know, soldier. If it's a story based game,、soldier. you can make it whatever you want. You can, if you want a gay story arc, that's awesome. If you want <laughs>、yeah. a straight story arc, that's awesome. If you just want、yeah. to be a weirdo. Yeah, exactly. It should be like, something you choose yourself, based on based on yourself. Because games are all about like playing out a fantasy,、sure. so your character should really, you know, reflect your personality. Right. I mean, yeah. What if Mario and Luigi were gay? They'd be、yeah. banned in China. Maybe if I play Overwatch, I can be like, oh, Soldier Seventy Six or whatever he is. He only says he's gay, but he's actually straight. Right. Maybe that's just his cover. You know,、oh, so that he can do some undercover stuff. You know,、right. get into gay bars. Or I、whatever. don't really care. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just putting it out there for、right. fun.、Uh, but quite honestly,、uh, yes, anything that's considered not Straight in China、mm. is seen as immoral, and、right. it's not allowed to be promoted. And so you will see. I mean, 
come on, all of you guys have seen the Hollywood movies where there's like a random Chinese actor in there and you're like, why are they there? Mm. Like, what was that Kong Island thing? What was it called? The King oh, Kong yeah, on the Island? Was that? It's like set in the 40s or something and there's some random Chinese a woman in there who can't even speak English. And right. you're like, I, I know she's an actor in China. I know her. But I'm like, why is she there in the 40s as part of this like expedition to this mm. island? There's no make any reason for her to be there at right. all in any way, shape or form. But she's there. And the only reason is so that it can get into Chinese cinemas. Sure. It doesn't piss yeah. me off. It's just so blatant. It's very blatant. It's like, God. Uh, and what, what was it? I was watching... Um, some some movie the other day where like they kept showing a Huawei phone yeah. the whole time. Uh, what the hell was the movie? It was like oh, it was like a Mission Impossible movie. Mm. I think yes, it was a Mission Impossible movie, which is terrible by the way. They've really gone downhill. Um, <laughs> I like those movies too. The, yeah, I know, but the, Tom Cruise is freaking old. He's got to stop. He's like fifty-five. He looks like a. Skeleton. I think he's aged well. Yes, he has, but he looks old. Okay, he's pretending not to be. Okay. Anyway, yeah, he's in good shape. So. Now. He beats some dude up in the bathroom or whatever. And like he's like, this is his phone. He flips it over. Huawei logo. This is obviously like a couple of years ago this movie was made, I think. And then like later on, another villain's like, oh, this is his phone. Huawei on it. You know, it's like, you just come Vivi, on, guys. Vivi worked on the uh, marketing for TCL's phone campaign. Mm-hmm. And they had to go to, I think they went to L.A. for the event. Yeah. But uh, in Iron Man. They okay. had like it, so like the dude throws his phone and it's a TCL phone, but he's like, "Oh, it didn't break." <laughs> That's literally in the movie. You guys can watch. Yeah. It. Okay. It's funny. Yeah, I I just I know why it is because China only allows a certain amount of Hollywood movies in every right. year. Right. Right. So they have to meet certain criteria in order to be shown. Um. Anyway. Yeah. We're going on a tangent here. Yeah. Sorry. There's more yeah. people to yeah. to, to yeah, get please. to. Yeah. Please. Let's. Uh, David T. Uh, David Eleven uh, mm-hmm. says, "Don't extradite publishers to countries that don't recognize the Geneva Conventions, free press, free, free Assange." Um. Yeah. I mean, like, fair enough. Don't. don't okay. Yeah. Cool. I won't. He's he's saying don't do it. I wasn't planning. I wasn't going to do it. Dude. I wasn't going to do it. That. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. What's what's next? By the way, you can say whatever you want. It's freedom yeah. of speech on our channel. We don't yeah. censor. No, we Unless don't censor. you're saying like absolute garbage. Because yeah. I've seen that a few times today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zachary C says, long time fan, first time donation. Thanks for speaking truth to power. Thank you very much, Zachary. Appreciate it. Trevor uh, Trevor RN says, cheers from Communist Canada and our tier leader. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, yeah. Canada's pretty cool. Come on. No, Canada's awesome, but you know how I go on about Australia being owned? You think that's next? I think that they, your prediction? No, I think they already are a colony. I think it's, it's past it. They're, they're just an extension of China. I think point. certain areas. <laughs> I do, do not think a nation, yeah. the nation is all. You're next country. on the list, Canada. <laughs> yeah. You're next. I'm making a video soon. Don't you worry. Uh, yes. Yeah. The, the thing is to clarify yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Let all the Chinese immigrants in that you want. I don't yeah. care. Even yeah. investment, whatever. That's fine. But do not allow them to compromise your constitution of free values. No. That's the difference. That's what I'm getting at as well. Right. Um, and I don't ever want anyone to think that I'm trying to be anti-immigrant no, or no, anti-Chinese no, no, or anything. No. Hey, I'm Honestly, most of my friends are Chinese immigrants here. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. When they start going into your universities and changing what local people can say, mm. swaying the opinions, That's messed up. messing with politics, mm. like, but like the government of a foreign country messing with your politics and walking all over you using your own laws and your own free speech laws and your own you know hate speech laws mm. and stuff that's when you've got to draw the line and say listen shut shut the hell up mm. you know Agreed. just just get the hell out of my my get your fingers out of my pies you know what i mean yeah <laughs> anyway some of these people is very immature like 12 year olds in there mm-hmm. uh anyway mark says uh, did you guys ever check your health now that you guys are out of china like visit a doctor i can imagine the pollution and unsafe food don't help. that's going to be an adv china video we're going to do yeah uh, we're going to because this is inspired by a friend of mine who actually of all places from zimbabwe yeah went back after two years um and got a health check, and he had six different parasites. So we think that we have a farm. Yes. We actually think they might be imperative to our to our well being. Like yeah. If we take them out, we'll, we'll die. die. <laughs> yeah. So we'll find out. We're gonna have a yeah. bit of a competition. Yeah, we will. We'll see. Uh, Morton to Verstel, uh, Norwegian. Okay. Uh, can you kind of elaborate about the differences you've seen between Hong Kong and Taiwanese culture? Just curious. Yeah, I can touch sure. on that a little bit. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, 
Hong Kong is definitely much more business, finance, and like the day-to-day grind focus. Mm -hmm. Very much so. It's a much more competitive lifestyle, right? Okay. Uh, Money-driven. I'm not going to say greed-driven, but definitely money-driven. Definitely, You got to be involved in finance in some way Mm -hmm. or another, right? Um, Taiwanese people are definitely much more laid back. Yeah. Definitely much more easygoing. The parallels are that they're both very fairly open-minded and uh, looking towards the West cultures, if that makes sense. I'd, I'd like to say that if he's actually talking about culture, culture, and not just like society's mm. culture, um, <clears throat> both Hong Kong and Taiwan have a much deeper and real Chinese culture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, the actual ancient Chinese culture, and I'm talking about traditions, mm. religions, you know, things like temples yeah. and uh, you know, things they do at you know, home. Yeah. All these these type of things, they're still alive and well mm-hmm. in places like Taiwan. You can't turn around a corner without seeing a temple, nope. and somebody with incense and, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. Mm. In China, you don't find that. You do sometimes, but it's all being wiped out. It's so a washed out, real... Um, Distilled, dis- almost it's, painted, it's a, poorly yeah, painted over version. Yeah, it's a very bad version of it, and it surrounds money and health only mm. and nothing else. Mm. If you want to see the real Chinese culture, honestly, you're going to find it in Taiwan and in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. But I would say more so in Taiwan. Yeah, absolutely more yeah, in, in yeah. Taiwan. Hong Kong is Taiwan's you know, more Chinese than Hong Kong. Yeah, but I'll that, say this: it's because uh, Taiwan's a mixture of China and Japan, so sure. it's both Asian cultures. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, the Japanese culture, a lot of it comes from China anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. kind of all the same thing in a way. Yeah, I mean, they so, all borrowed, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like all the the same legends, mm-hmm. the same stories, the same medicine. Everything came from China to Japan. Sure, it's the way it went. Um, and then they just either improved on it or changed it or did whatever they did uh-huh. in Japan. So you're dealing with a much deeper sort of Asian uh, experience in Taiwan. In Hong Kong, it's kind of like England and Definitely China much more together. Western. Yeah. yeah. But you still have like that massive Buddha. Right. You know, Taiwan's probably... definitely more exotic though. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. 100%. Anyway, yeah, cool. let's, let's Good move question. on. Yeah. Uh, Celsior says, have you ever listened to the Seneca podcast with Kaiser Guo and Jeremy Goldcorn? Thoughts, gold corn. That's interesting. It's like <laughs> no. corn, like the band. Oh, gold corn thoughts. They remind me more of an academic version of you guys. Is that a slight? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I actually haven't listened to that. I think I've heard of their newsletter though, but maybe we'll check it out. I guess we're too dumb though. <laughs> I, I've watched a couple of these. Um, uh, I could have, could be those guys. I'm not sure, but these financial no, an- no, analysts. I don't think that's a- well, I've seen a couple of videos of financial analysts talking mm. about what's going on. We've in watched China. those, yeah. And it's absolutely they're absolutely on the money. I mean, oh yeah, they they know they what know, they're talking yeah, about, especially economic yeah. wise. Yeah, they know what they're talking about. Oh crap! I hate how this snaps down. Mm. Sorry, there's a lot of questions here. Sorry okay. guys. Um, Long Q and A session today, guys. Next, Trevor travels the world. Says, "Hey guys, thanks for everything you do. I'm headed to Hong Kong next weekend to document the protests. Wish me luck. How's your photographer friend Dave doing? Thank you uh, yeah. and good luck." Dave's doing well. Um, he's he's facing a little bit of a health issue mm. at the moment, probably brought on by the tear gas. Who knows? So uh, you know, just maybe give him a bit of a well wish. Uh, yeah. He's you know, as usual, doing his utmost to get the best pictures he can mm-hmm. and fighting a good fight. And thank you, Trevor. Good luck. Yeah. Like yeah, get some good stuff. Remember, you know, in Hong Kong, no matter how it's spun and the media spins are dangerous, you're be and right. you're, you'll be totally fine. It's absolutely not that bad. Right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Real Good Time says, how do you get your wife to not be a Chinese national? So we exa- if, just do us a favor. Go to the last episode. Watch the Q&A section there. We literally covered that for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, John Johnson Jr., 50 bucks. Lord. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, howdy, do you Chine- or do Chinese folks care about climate change, environmental degradation like folks in the West? Does the CCP want to address that issue? Can it be trusted to voluntarily reduce emissions? No. No, no one cares. No, they don't care. I mean, they don't give a crap. There are you know, definitely you know advocacy why? groups okay, that no, are Okay, no, you know why? It's because China at the moment is still, you know, coming out of poverty. Uh. And they don't give a crap about the environment as long as they're making money. It's very evident mm. by what's going on in China. And even more so... You can watch a documentary, if you can find it, called Under the Dome, Mm. which a well-known Chinese TV personality, only when her daughter got sick with Mm. like a respiratory issue because of all the pollution in Beijing, she went and made this documentary. It's still noble. Yeah. I'm saying for Mm. sure. She went out, but only after it personally affected her daughter, obviously. She wouldn't have given given a crap. She went out. No, definitely not. 
she went she went out and she actually exposed the fact that all of the trucks that have like Euro three stickers, mm-hmm. it's just fake stickers. Mm-hmm. They're actually belching out pollution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All these so-called factories that are supposed to be meeting certain standards aren't meeting these mm-hmm. standards, all this kind of crap. And it was pulled and censored. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it just shows you that they don't give a crap. All the Chinese people that I ever get into an argument about this, they're all like, oh yeah, well, England had its industrial revolution and was super polluted back whenever. Mm-hmm. But they don't take into account the fact that back hundreds of years ago or whatever, you couldn't cause that much damage, even if you tried. Sure. Burning coal, compared to the chemicals and the garbage that's being used in China, the plastic making processes and everything, um, it, you cannot compare. And also we've learned a lot since then. We've learned how to control the emissions and how to actually be better for the environment. But rather than do that, they take shortcuts. And that's why recently they found out that there was a factory in China using a chemical that caused massive amounts of damage to the ozone mm-hmm. layer. Um, and it just kind of went, you know, untouched for, for years. Yeah, you're not going to see, you're not going to see China, uh, China on paper will like conform to all this stuff. And then everyone's going to be like, look at China, the you, leader the, of the yeah. green emissions. No, stuff. that's, it's like their GDP numbers. It's just whatever they want to say. For sure. And the, the grassroots mm-hmm. environmental groups in China, which do exist, the yeah. green pieces even in China. Sure. They can't say shit. No, they, they get can't. so much pressure. It sucks for well, them. Well, remember the guy who reported the factory for poisoning the land and then yeah. he got put in jail yeah, he got for, in, he yeah. got put in jail for <laughs> disrupting their business. Right, right. Because they had to shut down or, or whatever. <laughs> So he, yeah, you know, it's it's a ridiculous situation. Don't expect China to care about the environment anytime soon. Well, I expect them to lie about it. And that's why China has fished its oceans dry and it's fishing all over the world in everyone else's territory because there are no more fish to fish. For sure. It's just the way it goes. Keep an eye on it. Yes. Teresa Wong says, flying to Shenzhen tomorrow. Thank you for all the helpful videos. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you for always chiming in. Uh, mm. Context Music says, been following you two for a while now. I'm just curious, what was the last straw that made you both move out? Yeah, it was a culmination of things. It was There was no real last final straw. Um, I think the attacks against my wife, to be honest. Yeah. But it, that it's stuff not just a last, ramped yeah. up so hard, mm. right? I don't know um, if it was the last straw, really. Um, it's It's about being smart. Yeah, to be honest, you reach a point where you realize that the kind of work that we do, which is YouTube videos, mm-hmm. we talk and we discuss China. That's what we do. Right. You realize that uh, doing what we do and the adventures we have, it's not just China. Of course, we go to other places too, as seen in our ADV China. Mm-hmm. We've got Vietnam, Taiwan, and we're going to India and all these other places. But doing what we do puts us in a very vulnerable position in mm-hmm. China because there is no rule of law in China. If they if they want to say you're a spy, they can come and arrest you. This is you. true. They did, they did it to a friend of ours. Mm-hmm. They've done it to a bunch of people. Yep. And you know what? You can't say anything. You can even have your, your government, or specifically my government, South African government, wouldn't give a crap. They'd never do anything to help, uh, you know, one of their citizens who's locked up in China. No. Like, what can they do? No. You know, at South African consulate, you go ask them for help. They, they give you a pamphlet that says if anything happens to you, you have to pay for it and sort your own crap out. <laughs> yeah. They literally yeah. do. Yeah. They're like, oh, if you die, you're going to have to pay for your own crap to you. Casket you know. or whatever. Anyway. Yeah. You have to get your friends to fundraise to send your, your dead body back. Anyway, the thing is, um, we could very, very easily just say the wrong thing that pisses the wrong person off. Yeah, yeah. The fact that not saying anything bad, just normal observations, led to these nationalist, ridiculous outbursts to go and attack my family back home, my wife you know, at her workplace, try to attack me, try to report me as a spy, try to get me kicked out for just being very moderate and normal. Mm -hmm. What if I said the wrong thing? I know, me and you were very reasonable and very positive. What if, what like, we're talking more openly now because we're not under the thumb. Mm. You know, we're not censored, we're not self-censoring. It's not worth it. it. No, I'm not gonna self-censor myself because I don't have that threat of my door being kicked in Mm. and the cops coming in, taking me away. So that's what, yeah, yeah, that's why we decided we need to be in a safer place, a place that's more stable, Mm -hmm. where we can rely on due process and the law. And it's only getting worse in China. It is. It's just getting worse and worse. And that's why we're currently not in China. We've also said this like 10 times. We have. (laughs) You should like get that speech and just hold up the paper next time. Mm, Okay. Um, 
I'll it's put perfect a button here. Yeah, it's perfect writing whether in SoCal when's the damn group ride. One one one. <laughs> yeah. Uh at some point, hopefully. Absolutely we gotta do it. We'll figure it out. We'll let you know. Uh Aaron Lee says, Greetings from Riverside, California. Longtime watcher, first time super chatter. What can relatively free nations do to resist authoritarian China? Um talk about it. Make people that don't normally care care about it. Mm. Um Honestly, with Made in China products, obviously there's a certain stock that people still sell, right? But like to actively look for other options for for goods, right? Yeah. Especially high, like expensive goods, that's sure. going to help in some way, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe yeah. next time you're building a computer, use a, a Gigabyte or Asus motherboard, which right. comes from, from Taiwan, Taiwan right. rather than support Taiwan. Yeah, su- support something like that. You know, support freedom. Yeah. Um, next person says. Uh, Deeth then says, wait, what happens in the question segment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. exactly. Uh, next one comes from Andrew Clunas. He says, I went to uh, looking for the Gulag Archipelago of China, of China proper yep. account of historical totalitarian, totalitarian abuses of CCP. I found Tombstone by Yang Jisheng about the Great Leap Forward. Mm. Heartbreaking. Thank you. And that's some good reading for you guys. Oh, I there. got a quick story. Okay. Um, a friend of mine, I'll try to keep it brief. A friend Please of do. mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A friend of mine has a fascination with uh, Chinese history and culture. He's actually he's actually a very well-known guy. I'm not going to say who he is, but mm. uh, his Chinese is amazing. Mm. He's better at reading scholarly Chinese and stuff than like a Chinese professor. Mm. He's incredibly good and he's smart. He's a certified genius. So anyway... His hobby is to try and find tombstones of like historical figures and stuff, right? So he goes around in the countryside in China. And uh, so he was doing this and he just stumbled in onto a military base by mistake. <laughs> so he's in this like mountainous region or whatever. Kind of been there. Yeah. And he uh, found the tombstones he was looking for or whatever. And like on his way down the mountain, he kind of like stepped out of the bush onto like some concrete or whatever. And there's a bunch of soldiers. They arrested him. They had him under interrogation. They made him sign all these ridiculous things that he's, you know, didn't see anything. He's not allowed to this and that. And the next thing, eventually, after a lot of interrogation, they let him go because his Chinese is that good. Mm. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of an interesting story. It is. Yeah. That is interesting. Uh, cool. Next uh we got five pounds for parasite removal. No, oh, thank from you. From Matt, our guitar. I am almost guaranteeing we have some sort Abs- of parasite. Absolutely. Hopefully yeah. we have the good ones. Yeah. Uh, Medic, does Hong Kong or mainland China win if I get a Chinese factory to make free Hong Kong t-shirt? That's a win-win. That's a win-win. <laughs> Uh, yeah, try that. <laughs> Morton, <laughs> Morton from Norway again says, thanks. Actually, great pronunciation of my name. I'm sorry. It's probably not that good. Going back to Taiwan in two weeks to meet my girlfriend cheers guys have fun in taiwan it's yeah. awesome get some strong zeros they've got strong zeros oh, strong i'm so zeros. jealous oh, at the family mark a... mm. you guys have no idea how good strong zeros are yeah strong zero all it's the like way. a zero calorie alcoholic drink it's nine percent it tastes amazing yeah that's what people don't understand is on these stupid diets that uh, we go on to try and lose weight you know like sugar carbs, and yeah. stuff and carbs and it's got zero everything but it tastes amazing it's nine percent all goal it's just yeah. they don't sell it anywhere other than like taiwan japan, and japan yeah Sucks. So. uh neon Noor says stalin did nothing wrong okay. i i am assuming that's sarcasm <laughs> it's sarcasm come on <laughs> uh, okay good just throwing it out there, Stalin was a disgusting, horrible, maniacal dictator. Yeah. And he's burning in hell if it mm-hmm. exists. Jimmy FZ says, what do you guys think of Chris Chappell? We've talked about that a million times. Thank you very much, though. Um, yeah, he yeah. makes it interesting and fun, got funny content. He's fine. He's, he's a friend of a, of a friend. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've talked to him a couple times. Me too. We'll probably do something together at some point. Yeah. Mm. If, or if the stars line. Mm-hmm. Lestaris says, what's your opinion on Chinese influence in New Zealand? Um, I we have a good, really good friend there. Actually, yeah. our music producer, he is in New Zealand, and he said over the past few years it has gone insane. Yeah. Like cover shops for triads that are selling fake alcohol, but actually there's other stuff going on. Sure. It's spread like wildfire. It's worse than Australia. It is. Mm. Uh, Joseph Chung says, "Your thoughts about the Hong Kong T-shirts and NBA games?" We actually go back after this. You can watch the beginning of this episode. We talked about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's hilarious. It's we, awesome. We support it. Keep yeah. it up. Angie, Staple Center, right? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, Angie Poorman. Um, sorry. That's got to be a terrible name to grow up with. It's probably saying? Poorman. 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 Poorman, if you say it like that. Poorman, yeah. I'm sorry, Angie. I'm not laughing at your name. It's just... Yes, um, you are. I was... <laughs> 
It's... <laughs> I mean, I'm a be poor honest. man. <laughs> no. you're, you're turning me into a poor man. She's obviously not poor at all, though, because she gave us ten dollars. Yeah, this is you should be Richman, Angie, rich woman. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Mm. And finally, the last one. I okay. finally wrapped it up. Oh, another one came up. <laughs> Nicolay Steen says, uh, "Wouldn't Hong Kong lose, lose, <laughs> lose a lot of its ec- economy value when it comes uh, becomes Chinese? Uh, why does China want it instead of using it as an international port?" Well. It's very simple, actually. If it became Chinese, it's mm-hmm. easier to control. Yeah. Then there's no rogue state. It's not going to be able to influence anyone's idea about China, right? The problem is, is that recently, because of so many Chinese cities being pumped with cash from the CCP, mm. chi- uh, Hong Kong as a Chinese city isn't actually that relevant sure. for the Chinese economy. I believe it's like 7% or something. Whereas before, it was like 90 right? Ah, uh, but... Hong Kong is pretty much the way China launders its yeah. money. Yeah. Because the Hong Kong dollar is tied to the US dollar. Mm-hmm. Not like the renminbi, which is just fake money that yeah, gets printed. It's like yeah, funny it's not money. Real, yeah. um, and so what you'll see is you'll see all sorts of scams like um, Chinese people buying gemstones and things mm. from Hong Kong, buying gold, doing all these things, buying all these things in Hong Kong because it's real money. Right. They'll have situations where people in mainland China will sell you something for a ridiculous price and give you a 90% uh, money back in Hong Kong. So let's say I sell you a a shoe for like a million RMB. And then I I promise to, in Hong Kong, give you like 900,000 RMB equivalent back. That's kind of what's going on. So they can get real money and then they can go to Canada and Australia and buy a house. Oh, dude, the CCP officials have so much money laundering going on in Macau and Hong Kong. It's not even funny. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, obviously they'll have to figure out another thing. Maybe that's like the exit plan is that's when they go to the West afterwards. Absolutely. That's where where all these people buying and driving around in Porsches and Lamborghinis, that's where it's coming from. Oh, yeah, it's it's CCP Mm. money usually. Yeah. Uh, Ego Player 13, last one. Long time viewer. First time catching up with you live. Keep it up, guys. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone that watched today we really appreciate your viewership we'll be back in two weeks uh exactly uh, absolutely every second week guys thank you very much for watching um we always appreciate it and it's this is our only real forum to just be real with you guys mm. and, and speak obviously we have our own Tell channels your friends. And, and this is what we thing. love doing though come on get over here but yeah thank you for joining us today it's been freaking fantastic mm-hmm. thank um, you alessandra okay uh, see you guys next time. Uh, I got a video coming tomorrow, so mm-hmm. keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, for yeah. those of you who missed my video yesterday, it will be coming in the, in this coming week. Yeah. Okay. Love you all, and until next time, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome.